On the night of September 5th, Belarus was noisy. Its military was forced to shoot down Russian shahids that the this country launched at Ukraine, but they flew to Belarus. As the monitoring channel Belaruski Gayan writes in Telegram, two kamikaze drones entered the Gomel region of the Republic of Belarus from the Chernihiv region of Ukraine. This happened at approximately 1.08. Already at about 1.30, another fighter jet was launched from the Baranovichi airfield and within 10 minutes, residents of the Gomel region heard two explosions. As noted, this was probably anti-drone work. At 2 o'clock in the morning, Belaruski Gayan published a video showing one of the downed drones burning and falling. It also became known that a second fighter jet was heading southeast from Baranovici. In the morning, the Belarusian Ministry of Defense confirmed the downing of drones. Tonight, September 5, a violation of the state border of the Republic of Belarus in the airspace was recorded, probably by unmanned aerial vehicles. A decision was made to destroy them. All targets of the violators were destroyed by the timely actions of the air defense forces on duty. An investigation is underway into this fact, said Chief of the General Staff, First Deputy Commander of the Air Force and Air Defense Forces, Colonel Sergei Frolov. This is not the first time that Russian drones have been lost and flown to Belarus. On July 16, during the Russian attack on Ukraine, the fourth kamikaze drone of the Shahid type flew into Belarus. It was later revealed that the Shahid that had gotten lost in Belarus exploded in the area of Babruisk. They shot down a Russian Shahid for the first time on August 29. On the night of July 30 to 31, one of the most massive Shahid visits to Belarusian airspace during the entire monitoring period took place. There is information about at least five kamikaze drones of this type. On the night of September 4, during Russia's attack on Ukraine, at least four Shahids flew into Belarus, one of them disappeared in the north. There is no reason to believe that the U.S. decision to allow the use of ATACMS missiles on Russian territory is already on the way. This was stated by the head of the Center for Military and Legal Studies of Ukraine, Alexander Musienko, on air at the telethon. According to him, threatening trends have emerged recently. Three missiles that the Russians recently used to strike Kharkov were identified as S-300 and S-400. They have not been used for many weeks. According to Musienko, the fact that the enemy has once again begun to move S-300 installations closer to the border makes it necessary to obtain permission from the United States for long-range strikes on Russian territory. In order to protect against ballistic strikes, it is necessary to have the ability to strike with ATACMS or even better with a JASSM missile for an F-16 aircraft and with a range of 370 kilometers. And then this will guarantee a certain zone from which it will be problematic for the enemy to carry out attacks, Musienko emphasized. According to him, Russia's decision to move its planes deeper into the country is temporary due to the threat of Ukrainian strikes on airfields from which the enemy's planes bomb Ukraine take off, because when they no longer see a threat, they will fly again. I hope that these decisions on lifting restrictions on strikes against the Russian Federation will be made. There are reasons to believe that they are already on the way, Musienko emphasized. According to him, the Ukrainian delegation's transfer of the list of targets should convince the American side that Ukraine will strike only at military targets in accordance with the requirements of international law. This is a decision to break the patterns in the minds of those who are accustomed to the doctrine of nuclear deterrence. The expert notes, much has been written and said for decades, he said, about how red lines cannot be crossed because Russia will strike back. This formed a whole galaxy of politicians. Biden also came out of those times and knows very well what the Cold War was and what nuclear deterrence was. That is why they constantly doubt. Musienko notes, 
According to him, the reaction of the leadership of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the aggressor state, Russian war correspondents, they are all hysterical, shows that they understand that there will be a decision. They seem to be anticipating this decision. They also feel that it will happen, Musienko said.